the sharp ring of a Chinese violin. A chorus of voices join in. Across the park, a bit of dancing. This is how I spent part of my summer holidays, taking in the sights and sounds of southern China. You get that on camera? It's on the wrong way. Over the course of my trip, I stopped in at a small school to visit my cousin Amy, who is teaching English in the city of Panyu. And then you guys have this one? But Amy wasn't the school's only Canadian teacher. As I discovered, many English as a second language schools in China seek out instructors from foreign countries. Uh, because most of the teachers here are Chinese teachers, I think the foreign teachers, they can bring us some very new ideas about how to teach or even how to, uh, how to communicate with the students. Today we are talking about how to use less paper. We may organize people to plant some trees. In this unit, the class is learning about the environment. Oh, like they're still making enough money from it, mm -hmm. so they're not interested on something else. A discussion not far off from one back home on Vancouver Island. So you don't think the technology is there yet to actually change over to a new source of energy and move away from petroleum products? Randy Stewart, co-owner and principal of Stewart College in Victoria, has his students talking about alternative energy all while practicing their English. Some schools focus on grammar um, and some, you know, test prep or uh, this kind of thing. We, we focused on fluency. We wanted our students to learn to speak English and communicate in English. Mouth. Mouth. For Wan Jing Li, learning this language means everything. Two years ago, she, her husband and their two kids uprooted from Beijing and moved to Victoria, a decision to give their daughters a better education. Because I live in Canada, I want to learn not just the language, I, I want to learn the Canadian lifestyle. Wan Jing says the biggest difference she notices between learning English in Canada versus China is the teaching methods. In China, we always learn grammar and the reading. I think a hard part is speaking. This is a point Randy can back up, considering he spent nearly eight years teaching okay. in Japan. But the biggest comparison he notices is the culture. It's, it's very different. Here in Canada, you're, you're teaching um, sort of multinational you know, classroom. Uh, the, you're dealing with many different uh, cultures and, uh, and backgrounds. And in Japan or China, usually you've got one. You know, it's a, it's a monoculture as such. And even though many countries like China begin learning English in primary school, Wan Jing says she didn't have much of a reason to use it outside of the classroom, which makes Stewart College her ideal fit. After two years, I feel getting better. This is very important since to me. Okay, so we, uh, we looked at this a bit last week as well. And with English being the most widely used language worldwide, Wanjing isn't the only one who recognizes its importance. English is known as the global language of business, and Wanjing is now one of millions worldwide who can speak it. In Victoria and Panyu, I'm Jen Moranitz.